the most common comment I get on my Firecraft videos are, did you really just start that on a wooden desk? In this video, I'm going to explain why I'm never worried about it and how you can build a consistent good fire. Our two Patreon shoutouts today are Anish and Kara. Thank you for supporting the channel. In my left hand, I'm holding a big chunk of German white oak, and we are watching this real time as I try to light on fire with a Bic. Spoiler alert, you won't even see discoloration happen even though I'm holding it on there for over 30 seconds because it's a hardwood which is resistant to heat and it's a big thick slab with low surface area. Fires work best on softwoods and pines like this cedar and especially well if you increase their surface area by breaking them apart. I'm using the beater stick method. This is also why I recommend a thick tang knife. Make sure you place the wood near the handle and then you can beat on the tip with another piece of wood. Don't use metal here, you could damage your implements. Do not even attempt this with a folding blade or a cheap knife as you could damage it and yourself. The second method is called the throttle method. You put the knife into the wood, move them both down into a solid platform and slam them down together. You're not stabbing at the wood, you're moving them together into the platform then throttling the knife down towards your other hand. Make sure the blade is pointing away for this because once it slips through the wood, you will cut yourself if you have the blade pointing towards you. These two methods allow you to break down your fire prep without needing a hatchet or an axe. Very valuable if you're running just a saw in cold weather ops. Go until you have a good handful of finger sized fire prep. Next, take about a third of that and break it down until it is smaller than a normal pencil. You are massively increasing the surface area of this wood and making it much easier to start that fire. It's all worth it in the end. You should be left with three piles. A pile of finger size, a pile of smaller than pencil size, and a pile of messed up pieces that broke off that are all happenstance. Keep all three piles, they're all gonna be useful in this next step, actually lighting that fire. A big mistake people make here is they do not create these braces that I'm filing back and forth in this arrow shape. These braces elevate the surface area where you're gonna rest the rest of your fuel once you light your tinder so you don't just smother your tinder upon ignition. They will also help us control the airflow here in a minute, but for now, they're gonna protect that tinder from being smothered. When you ignite that tinder, you're going to light it on either side and you're trying to light at the bottom so the fire can come up through the material. I prefer a ferrocerium rod, but a lot of people are saying they're just gonna use lighters anyways, so I'm gonna teach to the audience I have. I've also done a lot of videos on different tinder types, so whatever it is you're using from dryer lint to cotton balls, just light it and let it flare up. Place all the small size down first, fan them out, and then lay your crap pieces across perpendicular. If they all point the same direction, then you're going to have problems getting airflow. If you feel like you've added too much, you're probably at just the right amount. It should be smoking a lot, which tells us that it's got heat, but it doesn't have enough oxygen to combust properly. So we're gonna reach back and lift up those braces that we set earlier. This provides air where it's needed most, at the base of the fire, so it can start running through and creating a current. Crackling and billowing smoke is a really good sign. Now smoke is one of two things in fires. It's either water vapor or it's unburnt fuel. I know this isn't moisture because this is extremely dry wood that I've had in my shop, so I know that it has to be unburnt fuel. That means it's a matter of time of it heating up and getting enough air for it to completely clear out. If you've ever seen a stack of tires burning, all that black smoke is unburnt fuel. A hot enough fire and that'll burn clean or as clean as tires can burn anyways. If you've seen big piles of brush with white smoke coming off of it, that is typically water vapor. Here's where we start to see those flames licking through and burning off that excess smoke. This is typically where I'd add my large pieces of wood and get them burning as well using a fire lay. We'll teach fire lays in another video. Even though this fire has been burning hot and efficient on my work surface for several minutes, there's not one red ember left when you scrape off that pine. And that's why I made my instructional area out of a thick slab of hardwood, because I knew it wouldn't ignite. 